Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel, and here's a headline from AMB Crypto. Here's the full case for XRP status as a good long-term bet. So I, I want to say a couple things in the outset, because there's a, a number of ways to, to slice and dice this, but like in the short term, I'm, co I'm counting on a huge rally that has nothing to do with XRP utility that will push XRP to a new all-time high in enterprise discovery. And although I and nobody knows exactly uh, when that will happen, if it does, and, and to what price level it will go to, I, I will say this. Uh, I will not be surprised at all to see XRP over $10 based on speculation and hype and frenzy around the crypto asset class alone, because the entire asset class moves in tandem. And XRP is the only top 10 cryptocurrency that hasn't um, hit its its new all-time high. All, all the other top 10 cryptocurrencies, uh, when things were getting hot, you know, last year, they did hit new all-time highs. XRP is the only one that didn't. And I think it's fair to blame this on a couple things. I mean, yeah, you can say, and it's true, XRP is to some degree lagged behind the rest of the asset class in terms of when it pops historically, although it does still move in tandem. You can see that if you zoom out on a chart. I think the bigger culprit here is probably the fact that the SEC is trying to sue Ripple and XRP into oblivion. So I'm thinking that's probably it. And I'm thinking XRP is trading at an artificially suppressed price as a result of that. But um, I, I still won't be surprised despite this just to see it just rock it up. Because when things start getting really, really going, whenever it happens, the people jumping in, it's not about facts and circumstances surrounding coins. It's this thing's moving now, more people seeing that, and they try to pile on. That's what it is. And a lot of it actually is genuine greed. If, if that's the impetus for, for jumping on board at that particular juncture in time, they, people just get excited, and maybe they're grabbing for a little bit too much. Maybe they should have thought this with clearer minds, and... And I'm not talking just X, it's true, just investing even in stocks in general. If something starts running, people chase that. It's just a silly human behavior. This is not unique to XRP, just to be clear here. So I, I do think that's going to happen, just to be clear. I think that's going to happen um, regardless. Like So in terms of short-term, relatively speaking, short-term activity. But, you know, look at the headline of this again. It's, it's you know, well, XRP status is a good long-term bet. Well... Look, uh, outside of that, what I just cited there, I'm also counting on XRP utility mattering tremendously in the future, which may push the price to levels that would sound outrageous today. That's the long-term bet anyway. So I'm differentiating between the short-term bet where we're in a nascent asset class where eh, by and large cryptocurrencies are being treated the same, not 100%, but in a general sense, it's pretty clear the asset class moves in tandem. So I'm differentiating between that and a more mature asset class uh, where at some point in the future, utility actually matters, and the differences between coins are sufficiently parsed out by market participants. Not that, you know, emotion 100% goes away, that's never going to happen. And, and I appreciate that, because without the, the, the ridiculous retail speculators, I mean, if, there wouldn't be volatility, and volatility is the purpose of investing. So these people are actually functionally useful in, in that sense. Uh, you know, I'm just not going to behave like that. But but that's how I'm looking at it just in a general sense. So I'm going to break down uh, some more thoughts like <laughs> within this article. But before going further, I, I do want to be clear. I do not have a financial background of any kind. I am not offering financial advice. And you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos about crypto-related topics, but just as a hobby and just for fun. Um, so, and by the way, at the time of recording this, market's not looking bad all things considered, right? XRP is now at 39 cents. Uh, Bitcoin is at uh, $24,694. Market cap for the asset class, over 1.2 trillion. Haven't seen that in a while. Uh, Bitcoin dominance down to 39%. So although Bitcoin's not been performing horribly lately, and in a general sense, it tends to lead the market right now, uh, it's, it's all coins that have been outpacing Bitcoin. And you can see it because Bitcoin, although the price has been going up it, it, recently, Although that certainly is true, its dominance is going down. It just means it's getting outpaced. That's that's all that's happening here. And take a look at this too. Here's the Crypto Fear and Greed Index. It's at 47 out of 100. And don't forget, and I don't remember exactly when this was, but it was very recently, whether it was a month ago or six weeks or seven or eight, whatever it was, 
We saw this fear and greed index at six out of 100, the second lowest it had ever been. It was the end of the world. It was never going to get better. Prices were suppressed. Bitcoin was at 17,500. We saw XRP as low as like 28 cents. And people thought that meant that it was a good time to sell because it could get even worse. Except for eventually bottoms happen. And I don't know for sure if the bottom is in. That's not the point of this particular conversation. I'm just saying... At some point, you knew it was going to bounce up higher, right? At some point, and I don't know when this is going to happen, I don't know if things get scarier first, but at some point, we'll even see the market back in extreme greed, which is why I, in any video where I talk about potential expectations, or not any, like a lot of them anyway, where I'm talking about potential, uh, you know, price appreciation, whether it's XRP or crypto in general, I like to highlight this because it's functionally useful to stay in tune with this because I think it'll, if you're in tune with this and you see how the, 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 the crazy, silly-ass lemmings behave, the typical retail speculators, I think it'll make it that much easier for anybody that is aware of that behavior and you can see it on a chart on a regular basis. I really do think that it'll help people to not respond like them. So make your decisions. I don't know what's best for you. I'm not telling you to buy or sell or hold. I have no financial interest in that. I would never want to presume to tell you what you should or should not do with your own money, your own investments. No, no, no. But I'm just saying, whatever you're going to do, just take the emotion out of it. You know, making important financial decisions with emotion is just a recipe for disaster. Almost 100% of the time. So then this piece from AMB Crypto, again titled, Here's the Full Case for XRP Status as a Good Long-Term Bet, reads as follows. XRP's fate has remained uncertain largely due to the lengthy SEC lawsuit against Ripple Labs. However, this provides a chance to evaluate the kind of opportunity that XRP's subdued price performance has to offer. What if the lawsuit is the worst-case scenario for Ripple, and what would a best-case scenario look like? Fortunately, it is not that hard to imagine, thanks to the robust growth that Ripple's on-demand liquidity service has achieved since its launch. Ripple is strategically positioned to improve the traditional financial uh, finance system. On-demand liquidity was designed to facilitate faster and cheaper transactions in the remittance and banking industry through through blockchain tech. And let me note something before I forget this. And I'm gonna there's some numbers that are on your screen. I'm gonna read all the specifics here, but uh, it's worth noting. So it's not only the case, and I think most of you at least know this in a general sense at this point, it's not only the case that if you look year over year for on-demand liquidity adoption, whether you're talking about Q1 of this year, if you're talking about Q2 of this year compared to the, uh, the that same quarter, the, the year prior, whatever you're looking at in that sense, if you're just looking year over year growth, yes, it's up substantially. But consider this, the vast majority of on-demand liquidity transactions, which again, on-demand liquidity requires the, the usage of XRP as a bridge currency, the vast majority of transactions prior to the SEC lawsuit had to do with corridors that were touching the United States. All of those corridors were obliterated. They were shut down. There is no on-demand liquidity with any corridor touching the United States. That's zero. And that's where most of the flow was. So think about that. So even when you're comparing like year over year, okay, fine. A lot of that had been evaporated from that point, but that's what I'm saying. Think about it. It's everything without the United States, and it still went up that much. That's insane. That's and, and, <laughs> but see that it also helps to like just hammer home the point that this is a truly global effort. And if the United States isn't going to participate because the asshat attorneys at the SEC actually win and justice is not done, okay, XRP keeps living. XRP is not going to die on the. Die on the vine here. It may scare markets globally and it may go down, but okay, then it'll find a bottom and it'll go back up and the rest of the world will keep using it. And I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think that the, the we're going to have some sort of ridiculous ruling by Judge Torres ultimately, assuming this thing gets to summary judgment. Uh, but I'm, I'm just saying, even if so, X, XRP lives. That, that's my personal opinion. There's no way to know for sure what this looks like. I'm just everyday Joe Schmo here. I'm just saying what I think. I've been analyzing this for years. That's my honest opinion. I don't think it goes away. It's doing too many things for too many other people and governments around the world, right? It just, it is, to, it's grown to that. And it's just going to, like the adoption just, it's it's ballooning. It's exponential. That's what you call exponential growth. That's why this is a big deal. And that's the point, a big point, one of the big points that's being made in this article. And then the piece reads as follows. According to an analyst called Anderson, who's on Twitter, uh, On-demand liquidity might be the secret weapon behind XRP's robust growth in the future. He recently highlighted the robust sales that on-demand liquidity achieved between Q2 2021 and Q2 2022 as a sign of what is to come in the future. 
And his, his tweet is on the screen uh, from just the other day. And I'm going to read it to you. He, uh, Anderson wrote, I believe the current on-demand liquidity volume is underrated since such increase is exponential. We know Ripple had an average of $23 million per day in on-demand liquidity related sales last quarter. Q2 of last year to Q2 of this year, which is in one year difference, it went from $158 million to $2.1 billion with a B, more than a 10X in a year. And he shared this chart, and I'm not going to zoom in. You can get the idea. It, it's not... I just want to get the concept across. It doesn't matter. Uh, exponential growth is a real thing. And when it comes to adoption of technology, there's a reason that I've been highlighting this. I've been talking about S curves. I talked about that yesterday. I talk about, I've been talking about for years, technology bell curves and why they're really super duper important and telling. And when you take that information about a technology bell curve and an S curve, and then if you understand that this is a binary bet, or at least that's what I think it is anyway, either XRP is worth a fortune in the future or at zero, that means it's getting adopted or it's not. That's it. That's it. Like, that's another way of wording it. When I say it's, it's worth a fortune or zero, it either gets adopted globally in a meaningful way or it's just going to go away. Right. There, I don't see a whole lot of room for in between for this. Honestly, I really don't. And, and, so, and so just understanding these concepts and the way in which humans adopt technology, when it hits, it's like, damn, it, it's pretty freaking quick. And so here we're talking about the utility, but that's why I opened the video by stating, although we are already seeing that, we have a nascent asset class that is not sufficiently valuing actual adoption in terms of utility and actual problem solving. But I do not believe that this asset class is going to stay immature like that forever. It's going to mature. And so while it's maturing, the adoption of XRP is going to increase and these prices this low will not stay here. That's, that's the bet that I'm making. And nobody knows for sure what's going to happen. I'm not pretending to you. I'm not telling you to buy or sell. I'm just sharing with you my, my genuine thoughts on this. That's the way that I'm looking at this. And so when I see this from Anderson, I'm like, yup. Just conceptually, yes. That, that is the way that I'm looking at it. And then the piece continues. According to Anderson's analysis, if on-demand liquidity sees a 10x growth every year for the next five years, its daily sales will be worth trillions of dollars. Such utility would offer a huge boost to the demand for XRP. He also expects such utility to attract a lot of speculative volumes, which will further strengthen XRP's price action. So just pause here. Even if we don't literally see 10x growth, because that will result in something ridiculous, even over the next five years, I just, I'm not going to make predictions in certain terms of specific timelines and what the multiplier might effect might be in terms of the actual flows of XRP moving around the planet. I'm not going to do that, but just in a general sense, I agree with the concept of that. And, and, and the idea of there being these flows, XRP, I mean, and, and then XRP ultimately having a, you know, a trillion dollar market cap, multi-trillion dollar market cap. Well, yes, that doesn't sound wacky in the least. We already have Bitcoin. I mean, it's fine. It's, it's market cap is what today? 473 billion. Okay. But it has been over a trillion in the past and it will be again in the future. I think that's, my, that's a bet that I'm making that we'll see what happens. And I think XRP can be above a trillion. I don't, any cryptocurrency that's really solving a gigantic problem for the world, and if it's around sufficiently, I don't see why some of them can't have multi-trillion dollar market caps. Why not? Why do you think it's so small? Of course it could. I don't see why we couldn't have a asset class with over a $100 trillion market cap. You know, it's not like, it doesn't take anywhere near that much money flowing in. You get people bidding up prices. That's it. Because again, market cap, it's just a calculation of current market rate. Times total supply. Well, well, in crypto, it's by circulating supply, which I think is BS, but that's a that's the way that it's reported, so it is what it is. I guess I just need to probably give that one up. The, the people have spoken. They're calculating market cap differently in this asset class compared to legacy finance, including stocks. Okay, want to calculate it differently? Then, okay. Um, <laughs> standards are important. I get it. Standards are important in human society. I just wish that they hadn't changed, but I don't want to go down that path again. I've talked about that plenty recently. But, um, but yeah, so... <laughs> In terms of that happening, then when people, so the asset class matures and people see all this, this additional utility, and this is for one use case. We're not even talking about the other use cases, which also matter. Well, is that, as all of this is occurring and the asset class is maturing and people are, and, and institutions are increasingly looking to invest in crypto, diversifying into crypto, but only in cryptocurrencies that actually do something so as to make it, you know, an investment rather than just a gamble, as they're doing that, uh, well... Where do you think it's going to go? Where, where do you think that money's going to go? So we, the point being, 
yes, speculative volume would increase on top of that. That's the point. That's that's how that's what happens. As as more people want to di- diversify, that's what I think anyway. As more people want to decide they want to diversify, get into the, the crypto space, they'll be looking for that real world utility. That's where the money is going to flow. And it's here in spades. It's so obvious right now. But most of the world doesn't know this, which means the re- that most of the world doesn't agree with this. But again, they, like I said, don't by and large even know about this. But that's why I'm excited about this. The fact that we know about this, that means it's not too late. In fact, you're super duper early, far less than 1% of humans have ever held XRP at any point in time. Congratulations. You have you have really come here at a very unique and special time because uh, this type of opportunity has never existed throughout the entirety of our species existence. And I do literally mean that, by the way, that's not to get all hypey and excited sounding. That's true. I mean, it's a reason to be excited, but it's true. <laughs> there has never been a time like this. And it's been my, Crypto's now been around over 13 years, and it's still going strong. It just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger despite massive pullbacks. And my gosh, there's never been this opportunity for life-changing wealth. Nothing like this in history. What a time to be alive. I'm not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambo.